What is an HSG or hysteroselpingogram and why might you need one if you have infertility? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and this channel exists to educate you about your fertility and your body. So subscribe and follow along. Share fertility knowledge with more people. Today we're talking about the HSG test and what it can tell you and alternatives to that as well. Overall, if you have infertility, this is defined as not being able to conceive when you have regular periods and unprotected intercourse for 12 months if you're under age 35 or six months if you're over age 35. The big caveat to everything else I'm going to say is that that definition presumes you have regular periods and you're having intercourse. If for some reason you are not able to do that or your periods are irregular, you should go get an evaluation right away. If however, you've been trying and something has happened and you've reached those time metrics, you need an evaluation. You always can see a fertility doctor early. Nobody's going to tell you no. And in fact, I see patients all the time who wanna get something checked out because they're trying. And sometimes we find something that we're able to act on sooner than waiting for those intervals. But the reason why we wait for those time intervals is that is when the rate of getting pregnant starts to decrease. Now, it's not that you can't get pregnant, but if you're under age 35 and you start trying to get pregnant, in general, your pregnancy rate per month is going to be around 20%, which is pretty good. Once you've hit that one year mark and you're not pregnant, your monthly pregnancy rate has now dropped to four to 5%. Not zero, but not super high. Once you've gotten to two years, that rate has dropped to two to 3%. Again, not zero, but not very high. This is why we wanna bring you in and do an evaluation and see what we can do to increase the chance that you're gonna get pregnant. For a basic evaluation, we're going to check your medical history, are you ovulating? Your ovarian reserve, how many eggs do you have? A semen analysis, and then your anatomy. And this is where the HSG comes in. An HSG is a test to evaluate the inside of the uterus and the fallopian tubes. HSG stands for hysterosalpingogram, which means we are injecting dye into the uterus and the fallopian tubes while taking an x-ray. When you go for this test, it might be in a doctor's office, it might be in a radiology place, depending on where you live. A speculum is going to be placed in the vagina and a small catheter will be placed through the cervix. You can do this test without a tenaculum or a sharp, grabby claw. So request not to have that. And most of the time in somebody skilled, I don't remember the last time I needed to use one. A very small catheter can be placed right to or right through the cervix. This typically feels like a pap smear at this point. Depending on the type of catheter, you might have a little balloon inflated with some air to hold that catheter in place and essentially to block the cervix so dye doesn't come out the cervix. The end of that little catheter will then be able to press dye through a syringe and you will see liquid go into the uterus. Remember that the uterus is a potential space. So if this is my uterus, I do not know on a regular vaginal ultrasound what is happening. When I push it full of dye, now I am separating the two walls and I can see if there's a polyp scar tissue, a septum, a fibroid, or anything abnormal inside the uterus. So the HSG is testing both the inside of the uterus and the fallopian tubes. It is a non-specific test for the uterus, meaning it can't tell me if that is a blood clot, a polyp, or a fibroid. It is just saying it has a filling defect, an area where the dye could not go. Your radiologist or your fertility doctor or whoever's doing the test may be able to interpret what it is, but very often you'll see filling defect, need further testing, or maybe polyp, blood clot, fibroid, scar tissue. So that is because the dye doesn't fill the side of the uterine walls completely. If this test is only showing you from the uterus the inside and is of a smooth lining or something abnormal. It can't differentiate between a septum and a bicornuate uterus, which I have a video on that. It also is dependent some on the angle. This is a flat picture and yet your uterus moves around in your body. So depending if you have a bicornuate uterus on which angle it's at, the x-ray is going to look different. This is why the person who is pushing the dye in might give you instruction to move. They might say, elevate a hip, elevate the other hip. They're trying to get the dye to move or to get images that are more three-dimensional. 
the x-rays are being taken pictures, not real time, even though they're doing it in real time. So the person who's doing it under fluoroscopy sees an image in real time like a video, but typically the pictures are saved in picture format. That dye can then go through the fallopian tubes. And an HSG is very good for the fallopian tubes because even the smallest amount of dye that can go through, you can see. What you're looking for on the fallopian tube is does the tube fill with dye and does it spill and does it look normal? What you can see is you can have a blockage of the fallopian tube and depending on where the blockage is might give you insight into what it is. So at the very opening to the fallopian tube, that's called the proximal portion where the fallopian tube connects to the uterus, you can sometimes have spasms, especially if the dye is pushed really quickly. In that case, you had no fill. You also had no spill, but did you just have spasm and are you not able to make a conclusion? That is sometimes what happens with proximal obstruction. The most common place fallopian tubes are obstructed are mid or distal towards the end, right? And if we think about a fallopian tube, that makes sense. This is what's connected to the peritoneal cavity. When you get mid or distal obstruction, we believe it. It's not spasm, it's real. When you have a blocked fallopian tube, that tube is no longer functional for what it needs to do. The tube needs to has cilia and it helps move the egg and egg and sperm actually meet in the fallopian tube and that's where fertilization occurs and then that embryo has to grow and develop in the fallopian tube for the first few days. This is why both the environment like inflammatory factors matter in addition to normal anatomy and functionality. An HSG test doesn't evaluate functionality or environment, solely anatomy. If you have a blocked and dilated fallopian tube, that's called a hydrosalpines, and that means water on the tube. And that is not just net neutral, like, oh, my tube is blocked, I can't get pregnant on that side. A hydrosalpines is quite significant. Not only is it problematic, but it can cause further problems with pain or infection, but it is actively decreasing your pregnancy rates. So a landmark study that looked at embryo transfers and somebody with a hydrosalpinx versus not showed a 50% decreased chance of implantation with IVF when a hydrosalpinx is present. So if you have tubal disease with a hydrosalpinx and your tubes don't work and you need IVF, you are also going to have to get your tubes removed in order to normalize your pregnancy rates. And I know nobody wants to go through that surgery or have their tubes removed, but that's a scenario where that is a must do in order to get those highest pregnancy rates. And those embryos are precious and you worked so hard to get them with IVF that you should absolutely do the surgery. So the HSG test does have to be done at a certain time period in your cycle. And this is because you need the lining to be thin enough so the dye can move through the cavity. This is typically around day six to 10 of your cycle if day number one is the first day of your bleeding. This can also be done if you're on birth control pills because birth control pills keep the lining of your uterus very thin. If you have an HSG and you're actively bleeding, call and get it moved. They're not going to be able to do it. You're going to have a very high chance of having a false positive result because of blood inside the uterine cavity. The HSG test gets a terrible reputation for a few different reasons. The number one reason is pain. Everybody has a different level of pain tolerance and to nobody do I say this test is painless, but in skilled hands, it should be quick and you should know what to expect. Anytime the uterus expands, it hurts. It causes some cramping. And so it should cause some cramping sensation. If you have a blocked tube, it can cause a more intense pain. So if somebody does have a blocked tube, the pressure building up in the uterus can be more painful. So communicate to whoever's doing the test, that is uncomfortable, do you need to keep going? This is hurting, I wanna let you know. Usually patients are going to take anti-inflammatories like 800 milligram of an NSAID like ibuprofen or Motrin before you come. And most people are going to give you a short course of antibiotics afterward because hypothetically you could get a pelvic infection from doing the test since the dye is going through the fallopian tubes. Do not have intercourse immediately afterwards because we, same reason, pelvic infection. We want to give your body a hot minute to rest. An HSG test is the gold standard of a screening test. True diagnostic ways to look at the fallopian tube is actually going to be with surgery. So laparoscopy with what we call chromotubation or pushing blue dye through the uterus and the tubes but watching with your eyeballs. Obviously surgery is much more invasive than the x-ray test, so we lean towards that. 
You can also try a FinView test in the office, also known as the bubble test or a water ultrasound with bubbles. This is where you're putting saline or water into the uterine cavity and then you push bubbles through and you can hopefully see them move through the fallopian tubes. That test is great for the uterus. It is not as good for the fallopian tubes. So if you get an inconclusive result, you might wanna have an HSG or your doctor will talk you through it, depending on what they see. Not everybody offers that test. We do. I really like it in the right patient. Remember that your risk for tubal disease goes up if you smoke cigarettes, if you've had an infection like gonorrhea or chlamydia, if you've had abdominal surgery such as a ruptured appendix, history of inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, or if you have known endometriosis or a Mullerian abnormality like a unicornuate uterus. If you have severely painful periods or you know you have endometriosis or you know you had chlamydia, you might want to get this test earlier in your journey of trying to conceive so that you can know that things are looking good. For the most part, the treatment for tubal disease is IVF. That is why IVF was invented and it's highly successful. Depending on your characteristics, you might be a candidate for regular IVF or for mini IVF or for InvoCell, but bypassing the fallopian tubes is something that is needed when you have damaged them to a certain degree. I find that most people are more worried about the HSG test than it is. It is very brief, ask questions, be prepared. I would not worry about it. And I tell my patients when things are gonna hurt and when to worry. Ultimately, it's going to be your own experience. If you tend to get lightheaded anytime you have a pap smear, or you tend to pass out from getting your blood drawn, definitely tell whoever's doing the test, because since the cervix is passed, people who experience a vagal sensation or a lightheadedness from certain procedures may be at higher risk. Also go into it hydrated with some food on your stomach and take some anti-inflammatories. Hope this helped you understand one of the testing things that we do to evaluate your uterus and your tubes. As always, you can get more information on the As a Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram for more.